Hey, Divi Nation. Thanks for joining us for day 22 of the Divi 100 Marathon. In this video, I'm going to show you five creative ways to use Divi's built-in margin and gutter controls. These methods require zero coding when using Divi, but result in styles that would require knowledge of CSS with almost any other theme. Let's get into it. In this Divi Quick Tip, I'm going to show you five creative ways that you can use Divi's built-in margin and gutter controls. So here you can see that I've already created a sample page um, for this tutorial so I can quickly show you the final product for each use case and then go through each of them one by one and explain how you can replicate them on your own Divi website. So first up we have what I'm calling uh, staggered images and this is just the ability to stagger the um, sort of top and bottom margins so that you get this nice effect here. Second, we have a closed grid with zero space between any of the images, giving you a nice, clean, tight gallery. Third, overlapping images. This is more of like a collage effect where the images overlap. And four, same, same idea as, as overlapping images, but this is overlapping text. And there is slightly more to consider when overlapping text, um, but it is very similar. So um, I just wanted to go over that separately. And finally, five, overlapping an image with another section. And uh, that's what we've done here. And I can show you how we're going to do that. So if we go back up here to number one, I'm just going to go through these one by one on the back end and show you how I got the result here on the front end. So number one, staggered images. Let's take a look at the Divi Builder. OK, so here we have my number one. And below that, I have a section um, with three columns in it and or a row rather with three columns and each column um, is an image module and so what I've done here is if I go into my image module settings and I go to advanced design settings you can see that here I've put a 70 pixel margin um, on my bottom here so that's going to push the image up and I've done the exact same thing on the farthest image to keep things uniform 70 pixels on the bottom and then in the image in the middle I've done the opposite I've put margin on the top and what that results in on the front end is this staggered effect so pretty simple but I think the result um, is very stylish and very appealing so you probably want to give it a try all right number two close grid so let's take a look at the builder so here in the back we have two rows three columns each, each individual module is an image module. And let's take a look at the settings here. And this is a bit different. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the row settings. And I'm gonna select use custom gutter width. And I'm gonna say yes. And I'm gonna bring that down to zero. And that's gonna make sure that the image in between the images um, that is kind of standard is no longer there. So there's zero um, space between those. And then I do that for both rows. And then I go into the individual image module settings. And there's really nothing I have to do. There's no, I don't have to do this here. And I don't have to do that on any of them. It's that simple. Go to custom gutter width, zero on both of them. And there you go. You've got a closed grid. All right, number three, overlapping images. And as you can see, this is sort of like a collage effect. On the back end, we're going to combine um, something new with the staggered idea that we saw in, in the first, um, first example. So what I do here is I go to the image uh, settings, go to advanced design settings. And in order to get them to overlap what I need to do is find the margin control that is closest to the other image so in this case this is the left image so the right would be the side that the other image is on I need to make it negative so depending on the type of images you have or the size of the images that you're using this value may need to be larger or smaller to get the desired overlap that you want but the important thing is is that it is the closest margin control to your other element 
and it's negative. Now I've also put some uh, margin con uh, margin control here, or margin value into the left, just to give it a bit of padding, um, just a bit of a space into the middle of the page. Um, but that'll be that wasn't necessarily something that I needed to do just to get the uh, the overlapping section. That's just stylistically I thought it looked best on the page. And then we jump into the other image settings. And you'll see that I've combined a bit of the stagger here by putting a 125 pixel margin on the top to kind of bring it down a bit. And so right here we have that 125 pixel on the top. A little space over here, that's that left margin. And then the overlap comes from this image's right margin being set so that it's a negative. Okay, moving on to number four. Now we have text overlapping. And so this is just a little bit different, very similar, but just a little bit different. So let's take a look at that. So here we have, instead of two uh, images side by side up here, we have two rows with uh, text in different rows. And so what I did was in the top text, I basically just set this to I wanted to use just a large kind of blocky font, um, make it bold, make it capitalized so that when I overlaid something else on top of it or I overlapped something else on top of it, it would actually show up. It wouldn't be just a bunch of lines intersecting. And so that was the important thing here. So I, I spent a lot of time uh, figuring out like a color um, and a font type and a font size that would look good with something else actually uh, overlapping on top of it. So that was my main consideration for that one. Now down here is where the overlap actually happens. So let's check this out. So what I did here, again, I spent a pretty considerable amount of time fig, uh, kind of fiddling with the text color, um, the text uh, font and size to make sure that the overlap actually looked decent. Um, but now let's get down into the custom margin and padding controls down here at the bottom because this is where the, the real overlap stuff happens. So the custom margin top is where the overlap happens. So I have that set to negative 40. Again, the important thing is not the exact pixel number. It's the fact that it's negative and you're going to want to make sure that uh, you make yours really just aesthetically pleasing as opposed to just overlapping. So you'll probably want to figure out what the right negative pixel amount is, but it will be negative. Um, and again, I had to put some other values in here just to get the positioning right. So you'll notice here on the front end, if I jump back to that, that this is not uh, positioned um, all the way over to the right or all the way over the left or all the way centered for that module. And so what I had to do was come up with the right combination of text orientation left with left margin and then padding for that element. Next up we have our image that overlaps a whole other section. And uh, again, this is the same idea of using a negative margin, but there are a few other considerations when we're using just Divi's built-in section. So if we don't want to use code, there's one thing that we, we kind of have to consider. So I'm going to show you that here on the back end. Okay, so here we are. We have the image right here. And if I go to the image, you'll notice that this is a transparent background. That's really important. It has to be a transparent background. And there has to be enough space between the bottom of the element and the bottom of the transparent image so that when it overlaps, you don't get like a cutoff point right here where say like the gradient looks like a line's running through it. So you need to make sure there's space because the actual image is ending somewhere like right down here. Um, and that leaves a nice, clean, beautiful um, shadow there. Um, but you wouldn't want you wouldn't get that if your transparent image cut off like right there. So that's that's really important. And that's just your design element. So in the advanced design settings, what you need to do is you need to enter in a negative bottom pixel count. So whatever your bottom margin is, it needs to be pretty large probably, but it just depends on how close your sections are in the first place and how big your your element is. And then the other thing that you have to consider is 
down here if you have a section background color. So what I've done here is made the background transparent, but if it's not, and say it's, let's say it's white, here's what's gonna happen. If I go back to the front end, it's gonna look like it's actually going behind that section. So what you need to do is set the section that you want it to be overlapping, set that section's background to transparent, and then whatever you want the background of that section to be, you need to make sure that that's your site background is set to that. And you can do that in Theme Customizer. And there you have it. Those are five creative ways that you can use Divi's built-in margin and gutter controls to achieve stunning layouts without ever touching a single line of code. We hope that you're enjoying the Divi 100 Marathon, and we look forward to sharing many more Divi tips and tricks throughout the series. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and email newsletter so you never miss a thing. Thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.